Browns at Ravens. Both teams with a disappointing start. Both teams really needing a win. Ravens for you, Jake. Yeah, so one important thing that I just want to call out with the Ravens, uh, Mark Andrews did not practice on Wednesday, so that is something to just keep in mind. If he's out, Isaiah Likely, Isaiah Likely is a must start. Um, but otherwise for me, I'm firing up ba both Bateman and DuVernay if they both play. Um, DuVernay rested um, as a veteran this past Wednesday. Bateman was able to log a limited practice for the first time since he hurt his foot. Um, but Cleveland is 31st in DVOA right now, just a bad defense overall. Um, and they're in the top half of football in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. So if they are both healthy and they are both starting the game for the Baltimore Ravens, I'm throwing them both in my lineups. Brown side of the ball. Bye weeks are in full force, folks. Donovan Peoples-Jones is worth a shot here in a pinch. Vegas thinks Browns will be in a negative game script in this one. And we saw last week that uh, when they are down, they will actually pass the ball. DPJ is operating as the clear second wide receiver here for the Browns in terms of snaps. He's also averaged seven targets. Uh, was He's also averaged seven targets over the last three games. I'm comfortable firing him up as like a wide receiver four this week. He has no TDs yet on the season. So my, my call here is DPJ finds the end zone here against the Ravens. Lovely Folks, call. thank you. Thank you, folks. This is Crush the Competition, week seven. Can't believe it's already week seven. He is Jake. I am Tyler. Let's dive in to the rest. Uh, or pass completion. Here's Lamar on a run. Bucks at Panthers. Panthers, sorry, Jake. Let's get it over with. Christian McCaffrey, thank you. All right. <laughs> Dude, that's exactly it. There's uh, just nothing else. Like it, DJ Moore keeps getting volume. Uh, PJ Walker, who's starting again this week, had a negative average depth of target last week. You just hate to see it. Just not the way to use his talent. And he's just – PJ Walker's not a good quarterback. It's just it, embarrassingly bad over there. But Christian McCaffrey's a running back one. He's in your lineups. End of story. Bucks, uh, you fire up all your bucks in this one. I really don't know what else to say. Kind of the other side of the coin here. Um, bucks are coming off a disappointing loss to the Steelers last week and desperately need a win. I think this this game could really get out of hand, leading to some moral volume for Rashad White. Uh, he is safely an RB3 play this week, and I feel confident plugging him into lineups. I like it. Falcons at Bengals. Bengals, your take. Uh, Hayden Hurst here is one of the prime streaming tight ends for the week, um, in my opinion. Uh, he's playing 70 to 80 percent of the snaps every single week, which we're seeing a lot more tight end rotations around the league. So Hurst being pretty consistently on the field is something that's great to see. Um, Atlanta is also allowing the fourth most points to tight ends, and they've only really played one like elite tight end in Kittle. Um, they've allowed nine 105 and one to Seattle's tight ends. Uh, they had nine to 92 to Cleveland's tight ends. They allowed six to 43 or six for 43 to Kate Otten, eight to 83 for Kittle. And Taysom Hill scored a rushing touchdown against them. So that counts against them for, for tight end points. But it's really just the most exploitable matchup. And it's the maybe non-obvious option. Because if T. Higgins is healthy, he's in your lineups. If Chase is healthy, he's in your lineups. Atlanta's defense has been bad against the run, too. So Mixon's obviously in your lineups. But Hurst is one of my favorite streaming candidates if I don't have one of those top tight end options. Falcon side of the ball. The Bengals run defense has been below average 16th DVOA, but 20, 30 yards allowed per carry on top. On top of that, the Bengals are pretty uh, banged up up front. I think they're down two defensive linemen and then a three down linebacker. You know, let's, let's add in the fact that the, the Falcons are hell bent on running an offense from 1920. So uh, here we are leading it to Tyler Algier uh, into my top thirties, right on that fringe. I'm not like, you know, Clearly into the top 30, but I think I'm at 29 or 30 right now. Obviously, Caleb Huntley is a thorn in his side, in this rookie side. It is a timeshare. It does kind of suck, but it's a good matchup, and there should be decent volume um, regardless of what the score is. Algier is a great bye week fill-in. You know, obviously, I'm, I'm still starting Pitts in London if you want to ask due to talent. Um, you know, it might be the end of me as I keep, you know, strutting out pits in London every single week and it's burning me more than it's not. But the, the take here is I'm still trusting the talent on pits in London and um, Algier, uh, you know, I think he cracks top 30. That's the call. Yeah, I like Algier here too. He's he's the guy who's he's running over 50% of the routes uh, in the past couple of weeks. So he's definitely the running back that I want as well. 
Lions at Cowboys. Them boys, your thoughts. This is, again, one of those where it's just like, especially if Dak is healthy, just kind of fire up everybody. Like, the, the defense in the Lions is... A, it's all like, bad. It's a wet napkin trying to stop a bullet. Like It's all be, bad. Yeah, so it, especially if Dak is healthy, you know, Gallup, Lamb, Schultz uh, is a tight end option. I think, again, last week was weird where he didn't have an injury designation and then still didn't play in the game. I don't know if that was the Cowboys throwing in the towel against the Eagles and just not wanting to risk him or if he tweaked it. But he's logging full practices again, has no injury designation. So I think Schultz gets fired up again. Um, so it, it, as long as he's active, he's in your lineups. But even Noah Brown becomes an option here against a bad defense. You know, Brown has, has showed a, some consistency with Cooper Rush. Does that stick with Dak? I don't know. But Dak has a propensity to spread the ball around anyway. So I like the options there as well. You, you know, throwing Noah Brown in a flex spot if you're in, you know, bye week hell like a lot of people are. And, and you're right. Everything you said is correct. I think one thing that I do want to highlight, though, because it is my Lions and I unfortunately get to watch them a lot, is although everyone is expected to smash, wide receiver twos on teams have ab absolutely been smashing more than expected uh, against the Lions. So I think Gallup is actually in play here for being top 36. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Gallup, like, cracked the top 24. I'm not, you know, projecting him or ranking him in the top 24, but I, I think this is definitely one of those weeks where we see Gallup go off. Yeah, and, and Gallup's volume has just been kind of down the last couple of weeks, but it just the volume kind of as a whole, I feel like, has been down. Um, but, you know, Gallup... The Cooper Rush effect. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if these guys are out there and they're healthy, when it's a bad defense but a good offense, it's going to be a pass-heavy game. I think the over smashes in this game personally, and I think both teams show out and have a good game. Yeah, the, the Lions, you know, we have seen uh, the, the, the offense be quite elite for the most part, but it failed miserably to the Pats right before the bye. But I think that they write the ship, as you've alluded to, uh, in return to form, even though it's a solid Cowboys defense. Vegas would agree with, with what we think as well, as this has got a 49-point implied total. That's three touchdowns for the Lions and four touchdowns here for the Cowboys, so a lot of fantasy goodness. You know, we are back to Jamal Williams, folks. Um, I know that Swift is projected to be back. Um, that might keep people off of Jamal Williams a bit, but I'm continuing to fire up Jamal Williams. Like, unfortunately for Swift, they've been using Jamal Williams at the goal line, even when Swift was healthy. Uh, even more unfortunate for Swift is Jamal Williams has been good on the goal line and actually converting. So, you know, sensing a theme here, so far I've been talking a lot about running backs, but let's keep at it. Jamal Williams finishes as a top 28 running back this week. Another side note, um, also grab Josh Reynolds. He didn't practice Wednesday, but if he suits up and Chark doesn't, uh, he's a pretty solid flex play. A flex play, I would start over DPJ, who I just mentioned. Yeah, I don't think Josh Reynolds has practiced on Wednesday the last, like, three weeks of games. So I, I yeah. think it's just they're, he's a veteran, so they're resting him. Kind of kind of same process there. The 5-1 and one Giants, Jake. I have to say that and check myself. But the 5-1 and one New York football Giants travel to Jacksonville to take on the Jags. Jags, Jake. Uh, the Giants are uh, – they're a bad run defense. Like, let's just be honest here. They're, they're not good at it. Uh, they're currently 28th in rush DVOA, so the, you can beat these guys on the on the ground. Their cornerbacks have been surprisingly good. Again, I do still think a lot of that is just due to the fact they haven't played really great passing offenses yet. Um, but I'm firing up both James Robinson and Travis Etienne this week. Uh, James Robinson hasn't been phenomenal. He's got like 15.3 fantasy points over the last three weeks. But this is a get right spot for him where he's a solid flex option, especially you know if you're in bye week hell. I think he cracks at least the top 36, but with touchdown upside, at least the top 30, uh, 24. Um, ETN is a solid running back too, just plugging him in with confidence. He's the more explosive of the two. He's getting the passing work. So if the Jaguars fall behind, which they have been, you know, semi recently, if this if this Giants offense continues to overperform, in my opinion, then I think that Travis ETN is going to get a lot of work here. But both guys, I'm comfortable having in lineups this week. Giants, uh, this is a risky one, and I, I want to call out here that it's a bit. I'm a bit biased here, so this is a biased call. Um, but one Wondell Robinson, you know, I love the guy. You know, I'm, I'm firing him up in places when, when I, where I need to, where bye weeks have kind of hit me or injury has kind of hit me. Um, you know, why not at this point? You know, what other wide receiver is going to catch the damn ball on this offense? You know, I loved Wondell's prospect profile. Although he is undersized, I think the dude is an absolute dog. Had such great production in college. Um, you know, he looked good on limited snaps last week. He had a 36% target share on just his 11 routes. So although, yeah, obviously small sample size, but when he was out there running routes, he was commanding the football. He was, as they say, earning those targets when he was running routes, which is something that we love to see in fantasy football. Again, more of a desperation play, but I, I couldn't help mentioning this guy as it's a guy that I was uh, grabbing a lot of in my dynasty drafts and finally excited to kind of start him here. 
Yeah, I threw a lot of fab at him this week in a lot of places where he was still available. Um, and, and they admitted, too, that he was coming back from injury, so they were limiting his snaps. And they've said that he's going to play a bigger role going forward. And he's basically Kadarius Tony, but healthy and with college production. So I love I love Wondell. Yes, let's go. Colts to Titans. Titans, what you got? Derrick Henry, next. It, it's just <laughs> it, there's some of these teams where there's just no other option. Panthers, horrible offense, but CMC's getting volume. Titans, horrible passing offense, but the rushing-wise, Henry's getting volume. There's just nothing here that I really, like, there, there's no special call to make. Like, the wide receivers are bad. The volume's being spread around. Robert Woods is getting some targets. In a pinch, he's not bad. That's, like, the one thing I would yeah. say is that he's, like, in that DPJ Josh Reynolds range for me. Yeah, easily, because he's getting volume, but he's basically a consistent. He's going to get you four receptions for 30-some yards, and he might just get into the end zone and give you, like, a 12, 11, 12-point 12 week. But that's really his ceiling right now. This passing offense is just terrible. Colts side of the ball. The Titans pass D is Swiss cheese at this point. 28th DVOA, 28th in yards allowed per pass. This is a clear bottom five pass defense. I mean, obviously, yes, you're starting Alec Pierce, honestly, at this point in time, and you're obviously starting Pittman, but Matt, Matt Ryan is in the streaming territory. I got him in the top 15 this week. So if you're, you know, if you have the, the Jalen Hurts or, or the Josh Allens this week, or hopefully you don't have Stafford, but you know what I'm saying? If you are if you need a streaming quarterback, Matt Ryan's one of the first places I'm looking. You know, I don't think they can pull off what they did last week in terms of just that passing volume. But again, I think the matchup is promising. So Matt Ryan is one of my preferred streamers. Uh, as a guy who has way too much Matt Ryan in two quarterback leagues, I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's been rough, but there's been some there's been some games, man. It hasn't been all bad for Matt Ryan yeah, this season. Definitely. But it's it, the, the downs have been so far down that you're like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> it's bad. Anyways, moving on. Packers at Commanders. Jake, hit me with the Commanders take. I wish this backfield was just clear. I wish I could just tell you which running back to start. But they're splitting carries very evenly. I think both Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson are, are, are startable this week. They're both flex options for me. Nothing too crazy. We're, go, we're getting a lot of running backs, but we got a lot of bad run defenses in these games. The Packers are 32nd um, in, in DVOA against the run. They're just not doing a great job at stopping the run. Let me live check that, actually, because I think I mistyped something there. Nope, I am correct. They are 32nd against the run so far. So... <laughs> They're very bad. This is how you beat this Packers team, especially since they can't throw the ball. They don't have wide receivers right now that are beating elite corners. Not like the the commanders have any elite corners, let's be honest here. Um, but this Packers team is allowing over 20 points per game to running backs, and that's mostly on the ground. So I'm just firing up both Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson. I've seen Gibson dropped in a lot of my leagues, so make sure you're checking your waiver wire. I think he's definitely at minimum a stash. we got to remember that Brian Robinson was just shot at the beginning of the year. Like there's, it wouldn't shock me at all if later on in the season they start to limit his touches to keep him healthy for next year, or if another injury arises at any point. I think Gibson's the better running back there, and I think both, but both of them against a bad defense. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't hate it if they were my last flex option in, in some places. The Packers, you know, is this the week where Aaron Rodgers looks like himself? I'd say yes. Top week, top 12 week in store for Aaron Rodgers. Finally, hasn't really had, I think, yeah, I don't know if it's top 12, but I know he hasn't had top 10 uh, weeks so far. I think you could do it this week. I feel comfortable saying 12, maybe not 10. Commanders are, are pretty much like dead last, around dead last bottom three in yards allowed per pass, and have allowed the second most pass TTs on the year. You know, I, I'm looking at Romeo Dubes this week. Um, I, I, you know, he's a clear full-time wide receiver here for the Packers, and he's seen eight targets in three of the last four games. Aaron Rodgers writes the ship this week, at least temporarily, with the help from Romeo Dubes. Big week coming. Yeah, I like it. I, I don't like the wide receivers there. None of them are really anything Inspiring. better. Yeah, yeah, they're like they're NFL players. That's it. So I like the Dubs call though. I, I do think he's better than Alan Lazard long term. Jets and Broncos. Jake, does either team score a TD here? <laughs> I would not be shocked at all if neither team scored a touchdown. I Literally, all I wrote here was just temper your expectations all around. The Jets' defense is currently top 12 in DVOA. Russ is dealing with a lat injury and a hamstring injury. Who knows if Brett Ripon is playing in this game? It's possible. This, this offense is just a mess. Russ doesn't look like a top quarterback. He's missing very obvious reads on the field. Sutton, I think, is still in flex territory for me, but I'm really just sitting everywhere else, and I'm just paying attention to what happens with Greg Dulcich. Great, great usage, scored a touchdown in his first NFL game, put up a tight end one week his first week in the league. 
I, I think, you know, he's definitely, if you're playing in like a two tight end league, I think he's definitely startable this week. But besides that, I'm really just, I, I don't want anything to do with Melvin Gordon and Latavius Murray and Mike Boone. I Whatever don't mess that was, man. Like, seriously. Yeah. Like, Melvin's now declared the starter. Like, yeah, right. Like, am I trusting that? Hell no. Yeah, like he's going to play the first snap and then Latavius Murray's going to come in and then Mike Boone will get some third downs here and there. And it's just going to look gross. And Jerry, yeah. Jerry Judy hasn't – he's been lo literally losing the ball in the lights, not fighting for the ball when it's in the air. K.J. Hamler's cool, but he's not going to consistently put up anything more than his stat line of last week, which was like two for 44. Like there's just no good options here. Sutton's still getting the volume. He's still in flex territory. But besides that, just get him off – get him out of your lineups. Jets side of the ball. I mean, fun stat here, um, and it, I had to really look look at this twice to realize it was real. But the Broncos have allowed one passing touchdown over the last five games. Like this is absolutely no joke. So uh, th this came from me seeing like that. Um, so if you weren't familiar, DraftKings last week had like a, they they boosted up a like over one touch or like having. Herbert score one touchdown to plus 100. It was like minus 800. And everyone took it. Like, oh, of course Herbert's going to get one passing touchdown. Comes out he doesn't. Big conspiracy theory. But really what they're looking at is prior to that game, the last four games, the Broncos had allowed one passing touchdown. So they allowed none again. So it's five games. Broncos defense allowing one passing touchdown. Like, this defense is no joke. Very unfortunate for Broncos fans because it's like you have a defense playing like this and then you have Russell Wilson and you hope things turn out. But I digress. So, with the Broncos' pass defense being first in DVOA, first in yards allowed, no surprise there. I'm sitting Zach Wilson and all Jets pass catchers if I can. I don't think any Jets wide receiver finishes in the top 36, and I don't think Zach Wilson finishes in the top 24. They are all sits. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Garrett Wilson because there's been some red zone looks there. But again, I would much rather just sit all of my Jets pass catchers and Zach Wilson in this game. So, very similar to you. Yeah, this is going to be one of those games where if you love 1980s football, just pounding the rock and doing nothing else, this is going to be a great game for you to watch. But if you like modern football, you are going to hate watching this football game. Texans at Raiders. Both teams looking for win number two. Raiders. Josh Jacobs is a top five running back this week. He's already producing at an elite level. He's getting the volume that we thought he wouldn't get because of a Josh McDaniel-style system splitting carries. But... Jacobs is just – he's showing out. He's continuing to be great. The Houston pass defense is surprisingly, like, pretty solid. They're 16th in DVOA right now, um, so about around league average. But they're 29th in rush DVOA. I know we just keep throwing running backs at you this week, but like I said, just a lot of really bad run defenses uh, and a lot of really good matchups. Um, they're 29th, uh, like I said, in DVOA against the run. They're allowing the most fantasy points per game to running backs. I think Josh Jacobs is an absolute smash here. There is not a single running back I would start over Josh Jacobs. Love to hear it, man. Th th how things have changed since the beginning of the season with you, Jake, honestly, with Josh Jacobs. Honestly, I, I admit that I was way too low, and, and I'm correcting that. And I wouldn't. I don't think calling him a top five running back rest of the season is too far out of the realm of what's going to happen. Yeah, man. I'm pretty much with you. Texans, Raiders pass defense is 30th DVOA, very exploitable. Texans um, are also touchdown road dogs, so you expect them to pass the ball. You know, this allows for a fruitful pass environment. Well, you know, as fruitful as, as Davis Mills will allow. Um, fresh off the bye, I think Cooks is in a get-right spot here for fantasy uh, managers. After a relatively disappointing start to the year, I think Cooks finds his way into the top 20 this week. I also don't hate Nico Collins in a pinch. Nico has led the Texans in air yards, not Cooks as many would have thought. So Cooks, top 20 play, Nico, fine, and, you know, is a pinch. Like, very similar to, like, what I talked about with, like, DPJ. Like, I, I, I like, you know, I don't know if I like Nico Collins' chances as much of getting a touchdown, but, you know, I, I think he's one big play away from being usable. So big Cooks guy this week. Yeah, he's leading the team in a lot of efficiency metrics on, on the passing side of the ball there. So I, I, I don't I, I, I probably would prefer him to Donovan Peoples Jones, but I like the it, they're essentially in that same kind of tier of like they need a touchdown to really be relevant, but there's gonna be enough volume and, and air yards there to go around. Seahawks at Chargers. Chargers, your thoughts? Fire up every single one of them. Just just get them in your lineups. This is the opposite of a couple games we've talked about, but this Seattle defense is pretty pretty bad they're 26th against the pass 21st against the run just fire them up get kenneth walker in your lineups 
Get Gerald, or not Kenneth Walker. Get uh, Gerald Everett in your lineup. Get Mike Williams in your lineup. Get Eckler in your lineup. Throw Josh Palmer in your flex spot and, and just be happy with it. He finally had a good game, finally got some of that volume. You know, this isn't a Chargers offense that has been phenomenal this year. They've been uh, a really low, low depth of target passing offense. The rushing efficiency hasn't always been phenomenal. But this is just such a get right spot for them against the Seattle defense that's really exploitable that I'm just comfortable if I have any of them on my rosters there in my lineups. Seahawks side, nothing wild here. You, you start your Seahawks players that you normally would start. Geno, DK, Lockett, Ken Walker, uh, likely fading the rest. Um, while the time is actually, you know, already passed, you know, to get a real chance of acquiring Kenneth Walker uh, before he comes a top 12 running back rest of the season, I still would try. Uh, three names that I would trade straight up for, for, for Walker would be Damian Pierce, Aaron Jones and Najee Harris, if he still carries weight with a name. All three of those names, um, I would at least send out to see if I could grab Kenneth Walker. Maybe the owner is not really familiar with how good he can be. And I think Kenneth Walker is a top 12 running back for the rest of the season. So again, I would trade my Damian Pierce, my Aaron Jones, or my Najee Harris straight up to get Kenneth Walker on my team. I'd even almost put Dalvin Cook in that tier too. Yeah. Like Dalvin Cook is real. I don't know if I'm there, but I don't hate the call with the bet on Walker. Chiefs at 49ers. Niners, Jake. Again, this is just kind of fire everyone up. Like, I think Kittle, like, you have to think about a little bit. The Chiefs are, are better against tight ends than they are against every other position. But they are a top five points allowed team against running backs, wide receivers, and quarterbacks. So Jimmy G is is firmly in that top. You know, he's probably my preferred streamer of the week. You mentioned Matt Ryan. He's kind of right there for me. There's just so much to go around. So many good options in this offense. Ayuk is startable. Debo is startable. Um, if um, Jeff Wilson is startable, like there's just so many good choices here. This is a Chiefs team that basically their defense is a sieve right now. Their offense is keeping them in games. And I think this is just another spot where the 40, this is kind of a get right spot for the 49ers as well. Just uh, of the options though, I think I'm most excited about getting Ayuk in my lineup. I think his breakout last week was real. And I think, I think he finishes over Debo this week. Chiefs 49ers defense has been stout, but injuries have hit this defense, unfortunately. Um, I'm not as scared of this 49ers defensive unit as I was through the first, like, say, four, maybe five weeks. You know, the Falcons proved that last week. Uh, unfortunate, but true. Uh, Vegas agrees, as well as this game carries a 48.5 implied total, um, which I think would not be this high if there were no injuries to this 49ers defense. You know, my heart here, Jake, wants to tout Sky Moore as a stash, but I, I am not so sure of, you know, if that's the move as of yet. There's a couple plays where I think he, he's not earning the trust uh, of Mahomes uh, quite yet. Um, I, I really can't cook up a, a take here, um, so I won't. Um, you start Juju, Kelsey, Mahomes. I'm, I guess if there is a take, is I'm just benching the RBs until something breaks or something changes. Yeah. Um, God, I really, I mean, like, I guess if I'm start, I have to start Clyde Edwards if I have to. Like, that's fine. But at the same time, it just doesn't feel good. You know, I, I think like I have Jamal Williams over Clyde Edwards Hoya this week, just for for reference. So, um, yeah, not, nothing too much for me here. I, I can't drum up a take if I tried. Yeah, I think I'd start basically every running back we've talked about in this episode over Clyde personally. Yeah, but that's... I and I think your point of the the 49ers defense being so banged up also helps my side of the ball because as we saw last week there was just a lot of volume to go around because they couldn't keep in the game because the Atlanta Falcons of all teams are are putting up good games against them and shutting them down. Plus, when you have names like Nick Bosa, uh, Talanoa Hofanga, uh, Traverius Ward, all of these guys are non-participants in practice or, or limited participants. Like, there's just – this might be the most injured defense in NFL history right now. Steelers at the Dolphins. It appears to his back, and the Dolphins need him more than ever. Jake Fins. Uh, for me, it's to not buy into the big game out of Mike Kosicki. Uh, Tua just doesn't throw to him. We we haven't seen him throwing to him all year, and that's largely due to the fact that Tyreek is so good and Waddle's so good. Uh, Raheem Mostert remains also the only rosterable running back on that team for me. I, I, I don't even want Chase Edmonds on my roster. He feels just like a clogger at this point. Will he probably hop into a role if Mostert gets hurt and misses time? Sure. Um, but Mostert seems to just be Mr. Mr. Forever, just going to continue to – he's running over 50% of the routes as, as a running back. He, he's kind of the main guy there. But for me, it's just don't – I hope you didn't waste a ton of fab on Mike Kosicki just because he had a big game last week. If he's still on waivers, just keep him there. Steelers, so we're recording this on a Thursday. 
So I don't know if Pickett has been cleared for the concussion as of yet. Apparently, if he is cleared, he will start. You know that that ser- that obviously has some pretty serious repercussions on this offense and and what happens. Um, I, you know, I think you start Deontay re- regardless, but you know my expectations are a bit tempered. You know, he's like Deontay sees the volume with Mitch, but it just isn't good because it's Mitch. And then with Pickett, you know, he he is giving a bit more to Pickens, but. You know, it's, I, don't, I mean, like, I just, like, there's so many unknown things with this. They're good. They have good wide receivers, man. But, like, the, the quarterback play is just in question, and I don't know who's going to start. I guess if there's, like, a, a hotter take here or a take that you want to, you know, walk away with, it's that, um, you know, if if Pickett starts, uh, I'd fire at Pickens in this one. Um, you know, he gets the looks from Pickett. He doesn't really get him as much from Mitch. Um, and I think Pickens is simply that dude. So if, if Pickett starts and Pickett is cleared with a concussion, um Let's get Pickens in there in those lineups, man. Yeah, Pickett was able to practice in full yesterday, so I do think that does bode well towards his great. Chances okay, yeah, awesome. Um, awesome. But as of as of uh, as of recording, we haven't heard anything about the uh, the Thursday injury reports yet. So, but I agree with the call there. Just this offense, I wish I could keep defending Deontay Johnson, but I even I'm getting to the point where it's getting hard. Yeah, I mean it's just unsexy. Look, the volume he gets. And the output that he has, like he's usable, but it's like it's your ten to twelve points a week, and like it just kind of sucks to know that that's when you know you're getting ten to twelve points a week. It, it's it's tough. Um, I I love the guy too, but apparently Big Ben just had some type of connection. So is what it is. All right, and close things out here. Monday Night Football, <laughs> Bears at the Pats. You know, with respect to your Bears here, I mean, when are we going to get a good primetime game? It's starting to get absolutely out of hand and ridiculous. Uh, no bears for you though. You got the pats. Thank God. Um, for me, it's gonna. Most of this take is gonna depend on Damian Harris being healthy or not. If Damian Harris does not play in this game, Ramondre is a top five running back. Um, if he does play in this game, both both fall into starting territory for me. I wish I could make a wide receiver take. I don't know if it's gonna be Mac Jones. I don't know if it's gonna be Bailey Zapp. I, I, I prefer Zapp personally. I think he runs a football in an NFL offense a little bit better at this stage. Um, Turnover worthy uh, play percentage also agrees with me there, um, but just I, I the Bears are surprisingly good at limiting fantasy upside of the, of their opponents wide receivers. Um, they're in the top half of football in pass DVOA. Um, they're but they're twenty seventh against a run. Again, we're just hammering running backs this week. Apparently, this is the week to get the running backs into your flex spot. Um, but Ramondre, even if Damian Harris is healthy, I, I'm comfortable firing up as a running back too over a Najee, over a probably even over Damian Pierce, honestly. Like, I think I'm comfortable with, with Ramondre at this point. They've shown that they are they don't trust any other running back to be a workhorse and get passing work still besides Ramondre for whatever reason. Yep. So yep. Ramondre, just fire him up rest of the season. And, and maybe if he has a really good game and then Damian Harris is going to come back and have a role after this week, maybe that opens up a really sell-high opportunity for him where you could turn him into, you know, some high-quality options. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some chatter about uh, Ramondre after last week being a – a top 12 dynasty running back and like I'm just not there yet because like he's there because of an injury like you know what I'm saying like it's just you can't just be like oh look some player got hurt now he gets all this play he's like a top 12 dynasty running back for me that's not how it works like is is Ramondre ascending yes he is ascending but I mean it's because of an injury we'll see what happens when 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 Damian Harris gets back if he holds on to it good for him but this usage that we're seeing from Ramondre um, just like this stranglehold over the Pats backfield. Like, I don't think we've seen since like Dion Lewis in 2015. Yeah. So it's like, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily betting that it sticks. I think Ramondre is probably a pretty safe top 24 running back rest of the season, but I'm not ready to anoint the guy to be top 12. Yeah, I think it's more, they just realize that Pierre strong and Kevin Harris just aren't that great. Yeah. Facts. They, they, they need to draft another running back in the, and on day two next year. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, Bears, like, I, I, I wanted to tout Fields. He's had a good couple fantasy weeks the last two weeks, um, but I just can't do it against the Pats. Uh, it's just not there for me. I think the actionable take here is people have been dropping Khalil Herbert with Montgomery back. Herbert is only rostered in 57% of Yahoo leagues right now. That needs to be much higher. I still think he's much more talented uh, than, than Montgomery, albeit I think obviously the Bears do prefer Montgomery. Maybe that's because of his pass blocking chops, but regardless, Herbert is one of those guys where we've seen it. If something happens in Montgomery, um, he's like borderline league winner. So he, he's like one of those preferred bench spots that we talk about, like Rashad White to an extent. And he has like some borderline flex appeal, um, still getting some volume. So Herbert uh, is a guy that I still believe in, and he needs to be on your bench if he is on waivers. 
we just briefly talk about the fact that Khalil Herbert cannot block to save his life and still has a higher pass blocking grade than two of the Bears' current starting offensive linemen. Thank you. Oh, my God. And, I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, I believe that somebody on the Bears' side of the ball said something about, like, riding the hot hand. Um, yep. So, I mean, that, you know, I'm not, I mean, like, that doesn't make me think, like, fire up Herbert, but I, you know, I think it lends itself to them, like, realizing that, you know, Herbert needs to be mixed in more than he is now. So, there yeah. is that. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he can't block. He's he's not catching a ton of passes. His receiving, he's only run or, like, had 56 receiving snaps, and his receiving grade isn't great uh, compared to Monty's, who, who's rocking a very solid grade here. But Herbert is the better runner of the two, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him get a lot of play this week against a beatable New England defense. Quick show here. Jake, you'll love to see it. Bye weeks do lend itself for a faster show. Final thoughts here, week seven. A uh, lot of running backs, going to be a lot of boring games, I feel, this week, which is just fantasy production. Somebody tweeted is, like, down 22% from this point last year. So just just going to watch a lot of old-school football. If you like to run left and pound the rock, this is a week for you. Jake, plug the work, plug the Twitter. You can find all of my fantasy football work through JWB, so make sure you follow us on all of our social medias as well as our YouTube page. And you can find my personal podcast at the number two AVG Husbands on Twitter and Instagram, and then spelled out two average husbands on all streaming platforms. You can find me on Twitter at FF Tyler O. That's all we have today, folks. Don't forget, tell somebody you love them. Later.